Hey everyone, Mihao here. Since some people from the Underlanging community call me the glass guy, I decided to challenge myself and create another glass material. But this time I'm back with a stylized or tune material. I wanted to create a fully procedural and customizable material so you can fine tune the exposed parameters and get the desired stylized look. So let's go ahead and see what the shader can do. Okay, so when you open up the showcase stylized glass level, you see that I prepared several examples uh, of material instances for different purposes, like uh, some glass uh, windows and so on. So go ahead and open up any material instance you can find in the pack and see how those exposed parameters were set up. But now let me focus on those three examples and let me show you how you can uh, control the shader. And a little side note, uh, the material uses additive blend mode, so nanite meshes will not work with the shader. However, I also included an uh, opaque version of the same shader. So if you plan to use a nanite with your glass objects, you can still do it, but it will not be uh, translucent, so it's like a current limitations of nanite. So translucent or additive materials are non unsupported uh, by nanite. So uh, yeah, keep in mind on that. Uh, another side note, some of the material features like uh, inner cooling or outlines uh, require custom depth to be turned on on your meshes. So let me show you what I mean. So if I disable render custom depth uh, for the window and in this glass, you see that the inner cooling feature is no longer uh, uh, working. Same goes with outlines. So if, if you want to use those features, just remember to enable custom depth pass. Okay. So I grouped the exposed parameters into categories. Uh, first one is surface, where you can control the basic features of your class, like color, uh, opacity, but then we've got custom depth bias, which works like a, uh, a threshold for the inner cooling feature. So if I increase it, you, we can see more through an object. Uh, it really depends on scale of your object. So if I put like a, a hundred here, so we essentially lose the inner cooling feature completely. So keep this uh, value rel relatively low. Then we've got uh, default Fresnel effect, Fresnel size, and finally the fade distance blend, which works uh, It's a cutoff or it creates some sort of a gap between the fade reflection and object, uh, which is opaque. So if I increase it, you see that it adds like a extra detail for your material. So it can be useful like if you put a glass on a table and you don't want the fake reflections to stay on the bottom and so on. Okay, moving on. The hard edge. So it's an effect that accentuates the mesh curvatures and creates sort of a fake stylized edge here. So you can control opacity, scale, and some offset. Okay, the next one, fake reflection. So it's gonna be my favorite feature of the material. So you have to enable it first and then choose whether you want uh, the reflection happen on screen space or object space. So let me show you the difference. So for windows, uh, you most likely want the screen space option turned on because it makes the reflection stay whether you rotate the object or not and uh, in the uh, when the screen space option is turned off, you see it it's kind of sticks to object rotation. So the reflection is based on the fake reflection mask, uh, so you can specify your own or use the one I included in the pack. So basically, it's a RGB packed uh, texture. You can specify a mask channel, uh, fake reflection intensity a scale, rotation angle, and offset. 
So now if you would like to use a smooth gradient like the one I, I have here in the G channel, so you have to disable the reflection sharp option and now we've got the proper uh, smooth gradient. I added this feature so even in the ro uh, low resolution textures you see you get sharp edges. So just keep in mind that. So the next fake reflection comes from directional light. Now if I rotate the directional light you can see that it affects the specular highlights. So you can of course control the intensity and change the bias. The lower the value gets the bigger the specular highlight is. Uh, the next group normal map. So you can add extra detail to your glass surfaces. You can specify a normal map here and change its intensity, scale. You can also lock the scale so the, uh, the object scale doesn't matter. And what's nice about this is the normal map uses triplanar projections so you don't have to specify, you know, uh, UVs for your meshes, so it's always good. Then we've got outlines. <laughs> it is what it says. So here we can specify outline intensity. So if I enter 0, it removes the outline completely. Uh, then we have got outline size. So you can specify how many pixels outline has. And finally, we've got the outline distance parameter which is basically the distance between the camera and the object. If I move 800 units from the object, the outline smoothly fades away. And finally, we've got the vertex color group, which provides more advanced control over the material. So you can enable this option if your mesh has vertex color information. For example, in this case, I painted the bottom of the glass. So this allows you to precisely control what should be more visible. Alright guys, that's it for this overview. I hope you like it and I'll see you next time.